is a Generation Gaming production. The video game news that was made for the gamers by the gamers. Join the revolution to put the gamers voice first. Now, from Generation Studios, this is a special edition of J. Lewis's Two Cents on the Grand Theft Auto video game series. Here are your hosts, the voice of Generation Gaming, J. Lewis, and special guest, Mighty Me Seeks. Welcome to J. Lewis's Two Cents. I am J. Lewis at your service once again. And this is a special edition of J. Lewis's Two Cents uh, on the Grand Theft Auto video game series. And I am joined today again by a good friend and fellow gamer, Mighty Me Seeks. How you doing, man? I'm back. <laughs> back again. Uh, last time we did uh, Generation Gaming Podcast, we just kind of delved it on current. Uh, obviously, that's what the monthly podcast is about, but kind of games that uh, Mighty Me Seeks was familiar to and got his perspective. That's kind of what Generation Gaming is about. So, <clears throat> we did... Um, this is a release. We just I just finished recording. Um, just kind of make a an example. Uh, I just finished doing the WWE video game series. It wasn't exactly. We tried to do it chronologically, but it didn't turn out that way. But it was two parts. So we might do the same thing today. Um, uh, or this might be part one. We'll see how far we get into it. Because uh, there's seven main Grand Theft Auto titles, and then if you break it down, um, there's a lot. We were talking about that before uh, we started. Because it is, <laughs> it's besides the main ones you know. You have like your other, there's handheld versions I didn't even know about or forgot about. And that says it all right there. If you don't remember it, then it must not be that great. Uh, <laughs> but um, obviously we're going to start, we're going to do the, this is going to be chronologically. We're going to start from one and work our way all the way to five as we currently sit in the video game spectrum. Um, so it's, uh, like I said, we'll see how far we get. And then we we'll, if we get all in one show, great. If not, then... I don't want to just do it, just cram it all in there just to do it. That's not for the sake of uh, the show and then the, the uh, art of video games itself. Uh, so let's start out with uh, Grand Theft Auto. Um, first of all, before we do it, um, I guess I wanted, what I want to ask you was, uh, I know how I feel. Um, have you... Let's see the best way to ask this question, because I had it earlier, um, but now I think about it, it's going to sound... Um, was GTA always one of that was one of those games for you? I know if it was for me that you couldn't wait for the next one to come out after. I guess for me three, I didn't play the first two. So when after I played three, I was like, man, I can't wait. And everyone has never disappointed me, even four. But yeah. have you always been a big fan of it, or is it? Or I didn't become a big fan of it until the third one. <clears throat> Excuse yeah, me. I, I played the people. second one. I never played the first one. Right. Um, I didn't even know the first one existed. Uh, <laughs> then my friend, like I really didn't. Right. Like it wasn't something that was on my radar. That I, I played the second one, and I was like, man, I can't wait for the third one. And the third one was like, it completely changed the entire like perspective of Grand Theft Auto. Right. Well, not really, but like just how they approached it, like visually and everything. So yeah, after that, I was like, yeah, I can't wait for more Grand Theft Auto games. I want to play this forever yeah i definitely felt the same way the first one came out uh see make sure i got my info yeah it came out in october well in europe and north america in october 1997 um and they uh let's see well just to be clarified it's the first like the first installment of the grand theft auto series that series um as of uh, this is calculated september 2013 the first one it sold over 150 million units since its exception in '97. Um, now the let me see the platforms. It was basically it was PC, and then you get it on PlayStation and Game Boy Color. Now you you said did you say you played the first one or the second one all the way through? I played the second one. I didn't even know the first one existed. So. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Um, I know they had it. Uh, they did, the first one is made up like six levels. It's split between three main cities, and in each level, you uh, player, you know, ultimate objective is to reach a target number of points, uh, yeah. which is typically achieved by performing tasks, you know, city, local crime syndicate, uh, and in each level is initiated by a telephone box, and it has its unique uh, set of tasks. Um, not obviously what they did in the new ones; it's changed, it's evolved so much. Um, I think everyone has their own favorites, uh, other than that. Um, but one, I just. I never played. I, I, I've when I say I never played it, I've like dabbled in them. Excuse me. I got to go back and like mess around with them a little bit 
I guess I could see it, it. It didn't pique my interest because one, I'm not a huge top down fan, and that's nothing against the series. Obviously, you don't sell 150 million units, even though that's a big. That's more than 10 years than to you know yeah. uh, for it to make that much. But still, um, I don't know. I just didn't really get into it, but I know it had its its high praises. Uh, because back then, like here's the, the I found some reviews, and you shouldn't. I don't. I, I tell people don't take reviews with a grain. Take them with a grain of salt because some people's reviews, game companies, even though you're part of a magazine, they could be just jack shit. Actually, it's mostly like don't look at the video reviews because they can be just awful. If you read the articles, they're actually better. So back then, GamePro gave it a two out of five. Uh, GameSpot gave it like an eight out of ten. So it's like it was like really kind of one one dimension. It was not like a singular kind of set of reviews. Like it all got like, like mid grade reviews, which wasn't bad, but, um, let's see. Yeah. Originally it was developed for the MS, uh, DOS, Microsoft, uh, windows. Um, let's try to make sure I have all this. Yeah. They started developing it in 95. And that's another thing I know it took you two years to come out with. Um, and I'm going to say, I'm going to probably say this later, I know I will, is GTA for me, I always felt, um, Rockstar in general, the Grand Theft Auto games, I felt like they have, they always take their time, and I think that's what makes the game so awesome every single year they come out, is because they're not like, uh, an annual game, because I hate annual games most of the time, I know that sounds contradiction because I play Call of Duty, but, um, <laughs> I think more games should do that, but, um, just kind of, uh, just real quick before we move on to the second one, because I know uh, Minor Me played the second one in full. Uh, the synopsis, basically, for the first one was uh, GTA 1 takes place in uh, 97, like I said. I said about the three primary stages. Uh, they were modeled on real lo- locales, I guess. Liberty City, they were based on New York City, and then Vice City, you know, Miami, da da da. Um, but uh, you also had the, I know we're talking this, and I didn't realize it was GTA London. 1969, and then GTA London, 1961. They were basically the same games. They weren't really... That was Rockstar Canada. It came out two years after the first one. Um, what do you remember from the uh, Grand Theft Auto 2? Let's move it along to that. Uh, I remember it was like... I think it was like 99 or 2000. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I played 99. it. Um, it was... I actually went back and I tried to play the first one after I got the second one. And uh, they're essentially the same. They're, they're all the same game. Yeah, that's what um, I thought. Except that the second one was a little bit more detailed. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit bigger. They gave you more features in the game. Like, you could do extra things. Um, instead of, like, running around killing everybody, you could literally play the entire game as a taxi driver, just do taxi missions. Like, they give <laughs> you a little bit more things to do. Um, the thing that I noticed was that, like, um, this was around a time where, like, 3D games was starting to come. Like, they were starting to try to move away from, like, 2D kind of games. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, uh, Tomb Raider was huge around that time. And, oh, like, yeah. I don't remember, like, this game getting a lot of, like, um, recognition outside of, like, obscure fans who liked it. Because, uh, oh, like you said earlier, the top-down view was, I liked the top-down view. But I thought it was interesting. <laughs> I, I was like, I feel like I'm, like, a puppet master controlling things like I felt weird. Um, are but, you referring to like when you say Laura Croft? Is that like the the time where uh, all of us at that age played the Laura Croft porn and looked at the titties the whole time and made a jump around a mansion with the old man? Is that- listen, <laughs> those pointy those pointy titties were everybody's fantasy <laughs> back then. Okay, we didn't know, but we didn't. I just I assumed that all women had pointy titties. I didn't know Laura Croft ruined my life for for like a few years, but. Like we was play, I don't even remember really playing Tomb Raider. I just remember just jumping around in the house, like man, how how much can I make a bounce? They didn't really bounce that much. But I was like, you know what? It's okay. Pointy titties. That's cool. I like those. I remember, like, I didn't get far. I think I, like, remember fighting a tiger, and that was about it. And I remember I kept locking the uh, grandfather, whoever that servant was, in the bathroom. Like, you, See, you, got, further, you, got, you got further than me, man, because I don't remember no tiger. <laughs> <laughs> you just kept jumping around, like. <laughs> I was just jumping around. The butler came on. I was like, ah, I tried to run away from the butler. It was, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't get far in that game, let's just say that. Uh, yeah, that's true. It didn't kind of, uh. <laughs> but, uh, really Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto 2 was like, um. It was different than every game that I had played up to that point. I think, how old was I? Like, probably like, shoot, probably like 12 or 13 or something like that. Mm-hmm. My math is not good. 
No, and, no, uh, yeah, I know the same. I can't remember. Up to myself. that point, I played games like you said, like Laura Cross. I played like Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, Super Mario. So then you get this game where it's like, hey, you can just go out there and just cause as much mayhem as you can. I was like, okay, this yeah. sounds pretty cool. <laughs> like it really lets you do whatever you want, and that's what made me like, man, I, I can't wait for the next game to come out. Like I can't wait to play that game. Yeah, I know. Before we were talking, I'm not. I was never a big, huge fan of the top down. So I just they didn't were, were never on my radar at the time. I was playing yeah. other video games because I think I was when I go console wise. I had a second Genesis. That was my first ever console, and that was like when I was like kid. That's when it came out. And then I had uh, I never had a PlayStation. I never had a PlayStation One. I had a PS2, but I had then I had Dreamcast. I always loved the Dreamcast. That was my, oh, uh, Dreamcast. I missed that. Yeah, I know, right? Um, it was ahead of its time. Um, oh man, but. Um, like I said, that, that over point of view, there wasn't there really isn't a whole lot of difference. I mean, yeah, there are some differences, of course. Now yeah. I remember you could actually it wasn't GTA that was was that just a driving game or is it you get out of the car right or I don't see I don't remember this I'm trying to get your perspective. Nah, you you got out the car you could okay, you could get fun. out of the car walk around punch people shoot things like it was you literally got like for that time you could do anything you really wanted to right. do in that yeah. game but it didn't really to me it didn't really get a lot of uh, attention because. It was that top-down view and the way that yeah. games were kind of, like, going forward. Um, so that's why, I was like, when GTA 3 came out, everyone was like, there were two other ones? I'm like, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Play those. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. like, even even before Grand Theft Auto 3 came out, like, people were, like, losing their minds over, like, the violence in the game. And you have to remember, this is, like, the late 90s when it wasn't graphic. It was just, like, you ran over a dude and there's some pixelated blood. Then they got more and more like aggressive, I guess, in their gameplay. Right. But people were already pissed from Grand Theft Auto One. Like I think London people were like riding in London yeah. and like and was like, Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna find whoever is trying to sell this game. You're like, What? And then like I think if I remember correctly, well, Brazil was like, you know what? You just aren't gonna have it all together. You're like, Really? It makes yeah, it look bad, yeah. Better. Um Yeah, so no. they were already doing stuff like that. Definitely, because I, I, I kind of, I, what you're talking about, in 97 when it came out, uh, there was a publicist, uh, his name was Max Is, excuse me, uh, Max uh, Clifford, the man's not dead, I say like Is, uh, and he he, um, he started uh, like facts about the game, um, so the violence, and kind of to reiterate what you said, that uh, he had, I guess, it says here, um, he planted numerous facts about the game in his articles, I guess, uh, about the mm-hmm. violence in the game, then some children, guardians, started a campaign um, that made GTA even more, you know, known and interesting. That was the first one. And mm-hmm. we get to GTA. Now, what we're going to do also, besides doing this chronologically, we're going to point out the the simple fact of the media and then people in general, especially parents. And I'm going to go, yeah. I have a tirade I want to go about that because parents annoy me the hell out of it when it comes to not just GTA but other games. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, before we talk about three first, and then uh, I will say something about that. But uh, that's also what we're going to do. So, and then now, two thousand one. That's when the big one, I guess. Okay, that's when everything I think really started for everybody was GTA three. Um, yes. It was October twenty second, uh, two thousand one, for PlayStation two, and then uh, May twentieth, two thousand and two, for Microsoft Windows. Um, and then two thousand three is when Xbox got Grand Theft Auto finally, which. All the PlayStation fans are like, "That's blasphemous!" How did you put this <laughs> <laughs> exclusive PlayStation game on a, on an Xbox? I just, I love that. That was great. I think I remember that because you put the uh, it was E3. I think it was I don't know who it was. Uh, it might have been the head of Xbox at the time. Like he had a sleeve and he put his sleeve up. They had like this tat. Well, I don't know. I'm sure, it wasn't real, but it was a tattoo of GTA on his arm. And everybody, I remember watching that. I was screaming like a little little girl. Because <laughs> I had an Xbox, an original Xbox at the time. Um, I played my own Grand Theft Auto with them big ass controllers. You'd be the hell out of somebody with them things. Those things oh, are humongous. It like, <laughs> was like a monkey fist right there. <laughs> <laughs> huge. Just like how, I had big hands, so it didn't feel bad to me. I was like, it's just kind of normal yeah. to me. Yeah. And I was like, I got these tiny hands. I can't play it. It's I'm like, like oh, a boomerang. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, you knocked them um, unconscious for that, man. Yeah. That's I, I just <laughs> remember I only I played GTA three twice. Um, I played it once through, and the second time I, just, I it was Liberty City Story, which really isn't a whole lot different. I know people are going to BS about that and get on me like, "Oh, there's this different." Yeah, well, it's the same premise game. It's not a whole lot different. It just came out later. Um, but uh, what do you? Uh, what is your one thing about GTA Three? I think that sparked your interest besides the obvious, just complete, just freedom. I think that most people just enjoyed from it. Just I do literally almost anything I want. 
Well, I um, the what really got me was how immersive the story was. Mm-hmm. Um, in GTA Three, you had a well, in, even in the first two, you had a, it was a silent. I don't even know if you would call him a protagonist. Yeah. He's a silent dude because oh, he yeah, wasn't he really talk. a hero. Right. He never talked. So like the whole story, he's like, how it's kind of like Zelda. It's like, how do you? How am I supposed to care about this dude if he don't talk? But they mm-hmm. kind of did a good thing. Uh, that's what caught my attention. Was like, for one, it was 3D, and it's this 3D world, which was completely different than the first two that they made. So I was already like, wow, they really like upgraded what they did, and not just give me the same thing year after year. You know, what's... and I noticed with go ahead, I'm oh, sorry. go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, no, I was sorry. gonna say I noticed with GTA Three, like they had like an actual story revolving around the character yeah. you con- were controlling. So you actually felt more invested into the story. And it still kind of was like, you know what, even if you don't want to do the story, ha, rob a fire truck, <laughs> do something. You're like, okay, that sounds good too. Like, Fantastic. Like that's, that, that at the time was my favorite game. Definitely. That, um, like, I mean, obviously uh, I have, you know, moved on since that, but that was one of, of the games where I'm like, yeah, I'm totally on board with, whatever Rockstar is doing. You yeah, know, it was funny, game. like, my mom, like, when I was a kid, when I was around that age, she tried to stop me from, like, playing it, and then it was just, like, she just gave up. I was like, Mom, you stop me playing this. If I start going outside and oozy and motherfuckers just for no reason, then, yes, yeah, I think you should stop me. But See, I'm fine. Because my, my thing about this was, like, it, it irritated me, like, and here's what I, I'm, I'm just going to say this now, is right. when I would go, I, I think I pre-ordered from GameStop, because I no longer re- allow myself to go to such places uh, as GameStop. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I pre-ordered, like, San Andreas and uh, Vice City. And I stood in line at midnight and got them. And I remember, both, and I, uh, same thing for, like, a co- couple of Call of Duties, I did the same thing. And I remember it was, uh, I think it was, it was either Vice City or one of the Call of Duties. Anyway, it's the same premise, was that parents got so uproared and so mad about, like, Grand Theft Auto, like, this game is horrible, like, shooting me for kids and all that, and... That's fine. Yes, I understand that certain ages shouldn't be playing that. When I'm standing in line, though, and I see mom walking with her kid in his hand, and the kid looks like he's in middle school, I'm like, what? Hold the fuck on. Like, excuse me, uh, time out. <laughs> There's a big ass contradiction going on here. I'm pretty sure. Do you even know what you're about to buy your child? Like, it's called Grand yeah. Theft Auto. That, that should be an it's indicator. It's very obvious what, the, what you're going to do. <laughs> like, it's a huge indicator. Like, uh, this is not wrong, right at all. I know GTA 3 got, like, the bit. That's where I think Sting started, like, with uh, people, you know, because. Uh, increased in popularity. Game, like, uh, definitely controversial. Like, the media. It yeah. was like they started citing things like uh, the ability to carjack, ve- uh, hijack, you know, carjack vehicles, uh, <laughs> having you know implied sex with a prostitute, and then the ability to kill the prostitute and steal the money, which I, I prefer. I do it I every time. Like, I don't, why, why not get my money back? Yeah, uh, yeah, for me that was a sport in the game. I was like, how many times do I do this as fast as I can? <laughs> I'll, I'll never get caught. <laughs> it, was the, it was to the point that. Um, which, uh, Australia, which, Australia's gun laws are, like, great. They don't have really much violence in Australia because of their gun laws, which I think is fine, but that's a whole other thing. But they banned it in Australia, and then, they, uh, they later released a censored version. I'm like, how do you censor GTA? What, are you gonna blur out the sex scenes with the prostitutes, or are you just gonna not show me shooting somebody in the head? Like, how do you, I don't understand. I, I never saw it, I never bothered to, but it just seems really ridiculous. Like, how do you, I, it just seemed stupid. And then one of the key reasons was, uh, the Rockstar Games failed to submit the game, I guess, was the, uh, Office of Film and Literature classification, uh, which in Australia, the highest rating of, of that was MA15+. plus. I guess is the highest game that's allowed to be played in Australia. And then they, obviously, it's higher than that. That's not how the rating system is in the United States. Um, that shit just says mature. And that should be, most of us here have common sense enough to where you should know, okay, if the game says mature, then little Johnny shouldn't be playing it. Like, that's kind of how yeah. I, I got the gist out of that. Um, besides, like, the three, the, the story, though, I always like the fact that the... The game literally got pushed back because uh, Rockstar wanted to... They reworked uh, the ability <laughs> to do drive-by shootings. So they stopped the release of the game just to, for that. I'm like, that is fantastic. That is a wonderful development. I'm like, you... <laughs> um, really but, uh... Did you, how many t- did you... Did you play the game more than once? Or is it just like you just played it all the way through once and then you just got out and moved on? I, Man, I, I came back it, from more. I, I played it so much that I almost had. I think I had an apartment in Liberty City. Like that's how much I played it at the time. Like it was so good, 
And, like, I remember, because you brought up the point with, like, parents and everything. My parents knew I was playing that game. Like, right. I couldn't lie to my parents. Like, Ma, I want to buy Grand Theft Auto 3. And she, my mom was smart. She knew. She's like, all right, well, if you go out there and do some shit like that on the street, I'm going to whoop your ass. And I don't know why. <laughs> I was so terrified. I'm like, well, I guess I can't punch prostitutes in the face and my mm-hmm. mom's going to whoop my ass. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it sounds funny, but, like, my parents, like, really was like, they didn't, like, hover over me, like, you can't yeah. play this game. But just, like, you know, you clearly can't do this in real life, right? Because I'm going to beat your ass. Obviously, like, well, yes. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like, how um, it's crazy how parents get, like, you know, and the kids, like, oh, you overprotect and overbearing like that. They're going to go, it, things are not going to go really uh, great. Yeah, yeah. I, re- I remember hearing stories about how, like, um, kids would go on, like, they would kill somebody or go on rampage yeah. or whatever it could be, and they would blame really? it on... Grand Theft Auto 3. They're like, well, I, I saw it in Grand Theft Auto 3. I thought it was okay. First of all, Jimmy, you didn't know. <laughs> game I knew it wasn't okay. you just trying to fall, put some blame on something else, okay? And then the parents are like, where did we go wrong? He's such a good kid. Oh, right. man, you're supposed to be monitoring that stuff, right? If you'd have told your son you'd have whooped his ass if he went out there and carjacked somebody, he wouldn't have done it, okay? Yeah. Don't give me that nonsense. Yeah. This has been something that's been happening for, like, games for a long time. And then this was like, Grand Theft Auto 3, in my opinion, was like, the poster boy of why violence in video games is bad. I'm like, yeah. you know, there's a rating system on there for a reason. You have parents for a reason. You need to know what you can and can't do in real life. That's not the gamer's fault. That's not the game developer's fault that some kid wants to go out and, you know, reenact what he saw in a video game. That's the job for the parents to, A, not let them buy that game in the first place. B, teach them what is reality, what isn't. And C, you know, make sure that he understands, like, you know, if if he's not of age to play it, then don't let him play the game. Right. Like, I, yeah. I play that game for hours and hours and hours, and I never once thought, you know what would be a great thing today? Getting a rocket launcher and shooting it at various <laughs> civilians and then hopping away like an idiot. <laughs> no, nobody thought that. I was, I played it. Everyone that I knew that played it, I was like, how do you feel today, brother? Then you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I have no desire to go out there and stomp prostitutes to death to get floating money from them. I don't want to do that. I would rather go play basketball. Yeah, we kids aren't stupid. No, that's not. Nice. You're like, oh, Grand Theft Auto 3 made me do it. No, it didn't. Right. You're just an asshole. <laughs> trying to play okay? Yeah, the, like the game that. doesn't make you do anything. If you like, I, oh. you could say, like, it's parenting. If, you're, if your child is that, like, you know, uh, singularly, like, into the game that much that they, like, think that's normal, then, obviously, you fucked up somewhere. Like, because <laughs> that's just, there's nothing normal about that at all. Like, if your kid, you know, no. has anything to do with that. Um, he was already like, like that before the game came out. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. He was already like that. Your yeah, like, your child. was already like that. He was, <laughs> he was a spawn of hell. <laughs> yeah, that child was already fucked to begin with. Because, like, there was already a rating system. The rating system came out in July 90, uh, I'm sorry, July 29th, 1994. So, uh-huh. like, it wasn't like, you know, this wasn't the first... <sighs> I'm trying to think, like, of a game, maybe before that, that was, like, as bad as GTA. And I don't, and I say bad, I mean, like, obviously is it, it meant for, it wasn't meant for kids. Because, you know, like I said, yeah. kids shouldn't be playing that game. Sure, 18 under, I... I you know, what's the age really that a kid can you know handle that and not like you know not to be scarred but just like be like affected by it because I don't think and I think it depends on like the kid and how they're brought up like yeah. they said uh okay so for example like um let's see uh, 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 Sega put uh, an ma13 symbol on the Genesis version of Mortal Kombat indicating that it was appropriate for mature audiences over 13 years old to play Mortal Kombat. Uh-huh. I guess I can see that, but then it's a little different for GTA because there's a lot, it's a lot more going on there, and it's a lot more advanced. Like now, it's just, it's. I see GTA Five, and it is like Grand Theft Auto Three from what you get. It's the same, it's the same model, but just way better. It's just on steroids. It's kind of how I, I look yeah. at that, and uh, you know, it's. Let's see what I wanted to find out was I was trying to find yeah, I just had it in front of me. Okay. Um, because all of them, GTA Five is the best-selling GTA uh, of all time. Yeah. And um, GTA Three at the time was the highest-selling game of 2001 in the U.S. Um, yeah. And it sold over two million units by February 2002. That's that's pretty good, actually, for that time Great. frame during that age of video games. Um, but and then a bunch of one of a bunch of awards, uh, like Game of the Year, Game Developers Choice Awards. Because you think about the stuff, it was also one of the games that like I. 
GTA was the reason why I think I got into RPGs, and I know I'm a huge Fallout fanboy, and I love those games, but you didn't have to do the story stuff. You could find all the stuff that was like, you know, you had races, um, yeah. more than, I know I like, think off the top of my head, but um, uh, what else could you do? Uh, you would have like, you you have like racing missions, you would have right. like assassination missions, you would have yeah. like, you know, um, these random like, these random missions that don't even really seem to have anything to do with anything. You right. could do, and you could even do like your own missions, like taxi mission, mm-hmm. police mission, uh, the, you know, like uh, uh, vigilante missions. You could take yeah, the vigilante car and the, stuff. And the, the fire hydrant, whatever. Yeah. And then you, you could, really, which I always enjoy doing, um, cause I'm just like one of the sticklers for that stuff. I love doing it. I'll go out of my way is, uh, the, I guess you can't call them Easter eggs, but they're the collectible items. Like the hit, yeah. I don't know what it was for this, but I know like four had the pigeons, and Vice City had the uh, maybe it was pigeons. If I, one of them had fucking pigeons, but uh, <laughs> I don't remember what they had. But I do know, like you're talking about, the Claude was the main character of three, and he was a, the game literally says he was a mute, so he literally was he couldn't he was a mute, so it wasn't like he just didn't have a, they didn't feel like making a voice for him, but that was their storyline, but. Um, I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't know that either. I'm like, I'm I just thought he was it. like, I don't have time to engage in conversations, and I was like, I guess everyone's okay with I that. I thought it was like, you know, lazy at first, and I was like, ah, eh, that's it. But um, <laughs> and you, know, yeah, like we were saying, you can do vigilante missions. Uh, there's yeah, the firefighting and then the taxi cab service. Um, he granted you with like context specific rewards for like example, like uh, you could lead, uh, when you completed a vigilante mission that allowed you to bribe police officers committing a crime after committing a crime i didn't remember that until i read that i was like hey you could do that um yeah and then you could do melee attacks personally i always i love gta 5 walking down the street and just running and just calling off and clocking the hell out of somebody i don't know why i get <laughs> joy out of that <laughs> Yagger. oh no <laughs> it's just so the way people fall it's just so it's like the, the physics is like oh that. damn oh especially when they fall <laughs> off the sidewalk down like like or over a over a curb into the street. I did that one time and punched somebody, and they fell on the street and got ran over by like a bus. I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> you just kind of like, "Well, I guess I'll just go on to my mission now." Like, <laughs> I'll just go. I remember, man, I, I I actually hit the back of somebody's car, and he got mad and got out the car and pulled me out my car and whooped yeah. my ass. I was like, oh, but they're not playing in this game. I was like, "Oh my god, they're taking it real seriously." So I had to I had to beat them up, of course. But I was I was in awe. I was like, he's getting out his car. He's coming to my car. He threw my ass out the car. Okay, now I gotta shoot you. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I was just gonna say. Like that happened to me one time, and I was like pissed. Oh, really? I was like, I put out my fucking rocket launcher, blah, bloom, like blew your car up. Like, <laughs> like that might have been overkill, but you're dead. Like that's what you no, get. From no, no, yeah, like, no. You totally escalated to the appropriate level. Bro. <laughs> like oh, you want to you want to go, bro? Rocket launcher. Yeah, never mind. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and then like the, the amount of vehicle or items and vehicles you got was was pretty cool too i know i don't think if i'm correct or wrong i don't think gta 3 you could buy anything just yet like own anything like as a uh no. not, of course not cars but like homes i don't think yeah, they just gave it to you like somewhere as the save point uh yeah, that was the like next it. one i'm pretty sure um all right, well, I think I in think, Vice City they kind of they gave you a little bit more things. You could buy businesses and stuff like that. I don't I don't remember if you could do that in Grand Theft Auto Three. You just got paid for each so. mission that you did. Yeah, yeah I couldn't find anything you had that a you safe could. House, but yeah, I don't think you had like you couldn't buy property. It wasn't they weren't uh, on that level yet though. Yeah, the only thing you could buy was um, you could purchase you know from local firearms dealers. Uh, was it uh, ammunition, which has always been called the same? Um, yeah, you could find them underground or you know retrieve them from dead enemies or found around the city. Um, but anyway, that that but for me that game is GTA three is the reason why I got into RPGs in general. Like, it's just it, yeah. it's, that's what it's what it was. I mean, you didn't you're not okay. You're not leveling up, but it's a role playing game in a sense. You're not leveling a character up, um, but they did that like in later GTAs and San Andreas kind of. You know where you, you could be a big fat ass or you could be like scroll. I loved I love that. I wish they'd bring that back. But um, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. All right, now I'm moving on on down. Let's see. Next would be my personal favorite, uh, Grand Theft Auto. That is Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Now, this is the first time our protagonist uh, was had a voice, and that would yeah. be uh, was Tommy Versetti. Um, was the character, oh, and uh, it was uh, Ray Liotta was the guy who played the voice. And I didn't know who it was at the time, but 
I just, Vice City, I just, I played that, I used the money code, it wasn't achievements at the time, so I didn't give a fuck, so I was using <laughs> money codes at the, at the ass, and I remember I bought the strategy guide for it, um, and I probably, honestly, I had that on PlayStation 2, and I played it through three times, probably more, I know I beat it three times, but I kept playing other times and more, but, um, what about, uh, what's your experiences from that? This, in my opinion, is my favorite and the best GTA game. I mean, as far as, like, um, everything that I offer. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be physically better than Grand Theft Auto V. But to me, right. this I like that it was set in the 80s. It was kind of like a prequel to Liberty City, but not really. Where, yeah. like, the time, uh, timeline of the story. This game gave you... It, it pretty much gave you GTA 3 on steroids. You had more weapons, yeah. more vehicles... Um, you had more places that you could go as far as like, you know, places you could buy, places you could actually go into and interact with. They had more vehicles. I think I already said that. Yeah. Um, one thing that I really loved about this game was the not only the 80s feel, it had the Scarface feel to it, but also, man, this is going to sound really ridiculous. I love the soundtrack of Vice oh, City. Yeah. Like, yeah. You could definitely. Just, I would just drive around the city just listening to radio. Like, like I think it was like. I think I read it was like nine hours worth of music on the on the radio stations, mm-hmm. and it was just like uh, like it totally just brought you into the, to the nineteen eighties Miami, and the fact that they gave you um, the character your main character that he could just talk and just start talking shit and things, I was like, oh man, this is even better than Grand Theft Auto Three. I didn't think it was going to be that much better until I played it, and I didn't even know that Ray Liotta voiced him. Yeah, I didn't until either. Later on, because I love Ray Liotta. Yeah, you know, so I was like, this is this had like this weird like. Off the, it was like Grand Theft Auto's version of Scarface. Yeah, me. that's kind of how it was. What it, um, uh, it released, they had like yeah, they had a whole bunch of stuff you could do in that game. I I, I just like the eighties. I think the eighties is, is oh definitely man, it, it was pretty good. Like it came out uh, October twenty seventh in two thousand two. Um, yeah. It's initial the initial release. Uh, and it like it won award won awards just like three did um, game of the year. Yeah, and then uh, let's see it. Uh, what I was here I was trying to find. Yeah, okay, at the bottom. Um, I know people loved it, especially me. It was visually awesome. Like, I know in the beginning you had to, yeah. you couldn't open up the other side of the map. It was like the bridge was closed until you did a certain uh, mission uh-huh. and unlocked it. Um, but it sold, in the first 24 hours, it sold 500,000 copies. That's pretty yeah. impressive for that time frame. This is 2002. In two days of its release, it did 1.4 million. And I, I mean, it's, it just kept growing and growing. Um, I like, uh, let's see. By March 2008, it sold. From that point, it sold uh, 17.5 million units. I'm sure it's more now, um, but it got and it got great reviews uh, from like, you know, I don't I don't like IGN very much. Uh, they gave it like at the time a seven out of set, uh, ten. Destructoid uh, gave it a seven out of uh, ten. Media uh, Metacritic gave it a 80 out of 100. So on and so on. It was all kind of the same. So it got like wasn't perfect. Um, cause I remember it was kind of buggy at times, uh, depending on when you, like, I just, some things, it wasn't like a lot, like, it wasn't like, oh, it was so noticeable, I don't want to play this anymore, of course not, but, um, <coughs> I just remember that, I had some things doing that. Personally, for me, I would always go to the fucking military base instead of tank, and, uh, <laughs> I would just, like, try to see if I could get, uh, five stars and see how long I could last in that. I know the story was you played as Tommy Versetti, and then he was a member of the, uh, Ferrelli family, he released in prison from after uh, 15 years, and your boss, Sonny Ferrelli. Um, and then you kind of like, basically, you were just taking over Vice City, and then you got screwed over by your uh, friend, or what, well, not friend, whatever his name was, uh, the black dude. Lance, um, this is Lance Vance Dance. It was weird. Some yeah, weird rhyme name. I was like, come on, yeah, man. Yeah, Lance just... Vance. That's his name, Lance Vance. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And, uh, and this is also, this is where GTA, where you can start buying properties, and then you can make money from your properties, too. Um, a certain amount of money. If you left them alone for a while, you can get, come back and get a good chunk of change. But, or you can do what I found, you could find the money code, and I just did that, and just, uh, you know, <laughs> did that. <laughs> oh, um, man, don't even get me started on those codes. You, ever, you had that piece oh, of yeah. paper, wrote them all down? Yeah, I had yeah. the whole, I had that paper, it was like, had like stains all over it and shit like that, put it in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been there forever. Uh, and the platforms were, it was PS2, Microsoft Windows, uh, and then eventually the Xbox, uh, OS X, iOS, Android, and Fire OS. Just 
just off the top of my head from saying anybody this that ever thinks they should play or want to play Grand Theft Auto on a phone or a, a smartphone, don't do that. Uh, no. Because I did that, and it was the most <laughs> aggravating shit I ever did in my life because the joystick is on the screen, obviously, and so you got to move him around and then point and then like point him, like click on the, on the screen where you want him to go. And then you want to shoot. It's it's just really stupid. I, it's I get I know why they did it. Money wise, it made so. Oh yeah, that's just another platform to put it on. Let's make some more money off the name. I get it, but it wasn't necessary. Um, the gameplay was good, obviously, of course. Uh, I remember. I'm trying to think what I was find about this. Yeah, the gameplay was the same, and they always have been the same. Um, and I wanted to find out you know, something here. Yeah, Vice City. Um, <clears throat> like three. You know, I got criticized for the violence, and I think I honestly think each one that came out, it got worse. I think now five, you don't really hear it like at all. I mean, I not like you used to back then. I think no. parents were like having like you know a shit fit over it. Um, it was yeah. also Australian version of, again was censored, and with the ability to, you know to pick up prostitutes disabled in that one. Uh, and then in November two thousand three, Cuba and Haitian groups in Florida accused the game of inviting people to harm immigrants. From the two nations. Personally, yeah. I didn't play that game and thinking, oh, wow, this is a game where I can go kill a bunch of Spanish people. Because that's exactly <laughs> what I think when I play GTA Vice City. Um, yeah. But apparently people got uh, offended by that. And Rockstar Games, they responded by removing several lines of dialogue from the game. Uh, I yeah. do remember that. And it I seems to like, have like, a largely satisfied the groups uh, who raised the complaints. Although the case was... Uh, then referred to a state group court, and then it downgraded from initial decision to refer uh, the case uh, to a federal court. And then oh four, um, there was a new version of the game was released, and removing uh, and changing uh, lines of this dialogue. That's why I think people are kind of censored sensitive about racism. Personally, I think racism is hilarious, uh, and, and I'm a white guy, so I'm going to automatically get in trouble. But um, <laughs> I always like on my back my black friends like you and my other buddy Odin Sauce, who's Generation Gaming's video producer. I say the most racist shit I can every time I talk to him because it's fucking hilarious because people take it too seriously. And I think there shouldn't be nobody should be racist because racism is retarded. It's stupid. There's no need for it. It's because uh, you might have a, a darker pigmentation and like you are evil. You need to get away from me and go back. It's like when <laughs> people people are like go back to where you came from. I'm like bitch, you go back to where you came from. You came from Europe like sixteen hundred or some shit like that. Here that. If that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous, but I, we can talk racism in video games. I, that's a whole other podcast. But I thought that was weird. I, I, I remember that that part of the game where you had to you had to go kill some Haitians. Yeah, and uh, it was part of the narrative. I, I don't remember exactly what, but mm-hmm. I remember like you know that was that mission. Yeah, I didn't sit there and think. You know what? I should do this in real life. What? I should just go kill some Haitians. It was just part of the game. Exactly, and I think. I think what it came down to, like, you had to look at what time, you know, this these games came out. This is 2002. Right. You know, the, the, the landscape of games were changing from, you know, a lovable plumber stepping on turtles, which I thought was actually kind of gruesome. We talk about <laughs> like, like, nobody wants to talk about that, how he just murdered all them turtles and mushroom things, but whatever. <laughs> we won't talk about that. But it went from, like, cute and cuddly mascots like Sonic and Spyro and Super Mario to, like... <laughs> Now I'm just gonna I'm out here murdering you know people. Right. It, the, it, it really kind of bothered non gamers. I think mm-hmm. people who were like parents or or people in Congress and all that stuff. It bothered them because that to them wasn't a video game. And I'm right. like, mm-hmm. you know, what's okay. also funny is like GTA was one of the first games that made me realize, or one of the first games that in uh, that tried to give us real life bills inside of games like every time you die to take yeah. money away from you i'm like really like you want i was so mad you know i was so mad i, I the first time i died i was like well i'll just come out of the hospital right. and i was like mine is 2500 dollars. <laughs> oh hell no nah. and i get mad i'm like i'm not dying today no sir i need to have money like i need a damn lawyer or something like that you know they what's funny to- i i like you said that is about um being like Scarface, if you think about it, a lot of the characters in there, it like modeled it kind of after Scarface in some aspects of it. There, the, law- the lawyer with the uh, blonde hair, like yeah. the, that guy, he was, it wasn't exactly Scarface, but he, he reminded me of something, I can't remember what movie it was. But um, a lot of it, it like that. It, it was either, I think it was, it was one of them gangsters movies, I think it was either Car- Carlito's Way? But yeah, mm hmm. I think something it was like that. Yeah, there, it was, uh, yeah they, um, it was, uh, but, uh, I, I know what it looks like though. Right. I know, like, you get, uh, this, I think Vice City was the first one, or maybe it was San Andreas, where when you committed a crime, 
I know, I know it, it, it's in five, and I'm, I definitely think it's in four. When you committed a crime, if you did it around other people, they would call the cops. But they just yeah. that sense of realism. I think it was in Vice... I'm probably wrong. I haven't seen anything. But um, I just remember that they had... You know, obviously you had the wanted meter, that the stars would go up, which hasn't changed at all. And that's another thing about, like, GTA and rock stars. They don't change the things that don't need to be changed. They don't bug stuff like some companies do with games. It's like... they. I feel like they change it because they think, oh, it's a new game, so I have to make it different. Like, no, you don't need yeah. to fuck with everything. You can leave most of it alone, but give us, you know, give us some more, some more stuff, and that's like kind of what Five does. Let what? me ask you this: I know you said like Vice City is your favorite one. You like that? Um, and I, I said the same. Considering how successful Five has been and how good of a game that is, because it's different from any other one, obviously because you have three protagonists. Yeah. Why do you think? Or I mean, again, maybe it's not a fair question, or maybe it's just a, a hard question in some sense. Why do you think that's not maybe considered maybe the 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 best one out of all of them, just because of how much success it has, or you know, maybe it's not fair to to compare them to past gen games. Um, <clears throat> I don't think you can. I I think when it comes to Grand Theft Auto games, I think it's going. It boils down to your personal preference of your favorite game, right? Um, because all all of them, because when you look at the the series of the games. You, you see that Rockstar keeps what works in those games, mm-hmm. and they just enhance it and add to it. Yeah. So, like, you know, when I play San Andreas, and then I play Grand Theft Auto 4, and then 5, you know, they're all the same game, except each one has something unique about it. You know, something that's like, you know, I think uh, I think we'll talk about it in a minute. Like, Grand Theft Auto 4, you were uh, Nico Bellic, I think his name yeah. was. Yep playing as this immigrant trying to make it in America mm-hmm. whereas you weren't really doing that in Grand Theft Auto 3 you were I think he was American I don't know yeah. and in San Andreas you played as you know a black guy from the hood trying to make something of him and then in, in the fifth one you're playing as three different characters from three different walks of life yeah merging it so each one has their own little theme to me I just like Grand Theft Auto uh, uh, Vice City I thought it was <laughs> this would sound ridiculous I really like the colors <laughs> <laughs> that was a colorful ass game. Like I was like, there's, there's, there's so many colors. Like it's so pretty. <laughs> I don't know. Like if they, uh, but if they, if they made Vice City in the same engine as they made uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, that would be the best game. I think, in my opinion, just because of how it looks. But right. I don't think we'll ever get that kind of re- remaster. No. It's okay. I think um, they, well, I think well, well, actually, that's not the case. I know recently. Uh, Microsoft was asked, I'm sorry, excuse me, Rockstar was asked about that, and if they ever remastered, they said they would, they have no problem, they want to remaster the old games, um, yeah. but they want to make sure it's done right, they want to make sure it looks great, it looks like, you know, the current gen system, um, so they're going to do it, they didn't ever give a time when they're going to do it, so we're going to get them, yeah. and if they do, I would definitely buy a remastered Vice City. I don't sure. care if I'm 87 years right. old, I'm like, hey, baby, give me that Vice City right there, you know, what you know about that, boy, you don't know nothing about that Vice City right there, boy, well, let me tell you something right there, back in 2002, I'm going to be that grandpa, I'm just playing Vice City, because like, Rockstar has, has, has a reputation, that's why they could literally announce now that they're making a re, uh, remaster of Vice City, yeah. and they don't put it out for 20 years, and I'll be like, oh, that's fine, because right. they have a reputation of putting out games that, you know, are up to their standards and what our standards are for games. So you can take your time. You don't have to come out every single year. And that's why their games are so successful, despite all the controversy and all that nonsense. You know, like, they, they take they take so much care of their games that, like, I don't mind investing money with, you know, Rockstar games, you know, because I know right. I'm going to get something good. Like, when I picked up Vice City, I didn't know that I was going to get this Goodfellas, Scarface, gangster thing kind of vibe i didn't know that no and i was like this is wow they really put time and effort even when you look at the dialogue and the story like it's they really put good. effort into it yeah it it's is It's really good you know <clears throat> so like, um, I, i'll totally buy this game again i know you um can meet characters from <clears throat> in vice city from different game uh gangs excuse me uh and then you complete different ga- uh, missions for those games mm-hmm. um and then you had to like uh what is it uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I know you could do things like the Vigilante minigame. That's a, that's they obviously did that. Uh, the firefighting and the cop and the tax cab, and then um, you also could, like you said, you're building your criminal empire. Especially as we mentioned before, you can buy properties. Like I forgot that you can buy a film studio. You can buy the taxi company, the entertainment clubs, strip clubs, um, and then uh, you could actually. You didn't have to think you get into buy them. It's the first time you could actually take your vehicles and store them in your houses, but you could just steal them off the street and then drive it like. You know, you could roll past the house and I yeah. steal that shit, and then park it, let the garage door close, 
and then open it back up and it's like good as new. And then <laughs> yeah. And um and then uh what else? Let's see. Ah, and then each pro- each um uh, commercial property has like a number of missions attached to it. I remember that too. I like that. Uh-huh. They have the newer one as well, obviously five, and then like eliminating competition or stealing equipment. Uh, and then once all the missions are completed, the property begins to regenerate ongoing income, like we mentioned uh-huh. before. Um, but <clears throat> I don't know. I think it's a, it's a classic. I think most people will say either Vice City or San Andreas was their favorite. Um, uh-huh. Because I think it's, I, I almost feel like, and we'll get to it, but the time you get to 4 came out, it's and it's not a bad thing, because 4 was good, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it was my least favorite one, um, and, I, and I, I say that, but I played it two times, like all the way through, so obviously it's not that, you know, you don't play a game two times through if you don't like it, but, because yeah. of the DLCs, we'll get into those especially, but um, <clears throat> I just think that... Uh, it is hard for them when they got the four. It's like, okay, what can we do? And it's kind of like they stalled. Now they backtrack too, um, and we'll get into that uh, here in a minute. Because next we're going to talk about probably the bit it, with the time. And I still think it's kind of no, it's not GTA Online. I'm sorry, GTA Five is the biggest. GTA yeah. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the biggest Grand Theft Auto game at the time they had ever come out with. The map was enormous. Came out uh, the 26th of October in 2004 for PS2, and June 7th, 2005 for Microsoft Windows and Xbox. And then they had like a high definition remaster, um, and then a, a physical release uh, for 360 and uh, PS3. That was June 15th and uh, June. I'm sorry, December 1st, respectively. Um, but. I think besides, this is my second favorite. The story was probably not as good as Vice City, but it was just as good, almost in some aspects. And like you said, like when you got pulled, the beginning was like when you got steal the bike and then I get pulled over. It's like this isn't cliche. I don't know what the fuck is like. They just, <laughs> but I was so mad. I was too pure. I was all excited. I was like, "What? Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and the lead character's black? Oh man! First steal that bike, CJ. Come on, man." I just started the game, man. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> no, I, got, was, I wasn't too upset. I was just like, really? <laughs> like, I think you okay. got like pulled over while you were walking, I'm pretty sure. Or when you were in a taxi, you got pulled over. And then they drove you to the bike. The cops and then drop, dropped you off. Um, but that, that was up, good, though. Because it almost like <laughs> that one, that story, it had like a couple boss, bosses you had to fight, if you want to call it that. You had, remember when you yeah. you uh, were fighting San Andreas? I'm uh, San Andreas. Uh, Samuel Jackson, the police officer, his character, he was on a, uh, a fire truck. And yeah. you had to, like, blow the fire truck up or stop him. And then you had to kill uh, Smoke, who uh, screwed you over. And after I played it a second time, too, I was like, damn, I can see it now. He was going to fuck me over. way he was acting about some of this stuff, like, oh, no, I can't do yeah. this, CJ, right now. I got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, this one, though, it, um, vehicle-wise, you got, like, 250 vehicles. It, like, up, it yeah. bumped it up. Uh, and you only had like 60 in the third one, which that's still a lot. Um, you had uh, uh, bicycles, a car, <laughs> combine harvester, you could <laughs> the big ass uh, farming vehicle, uh, you had the street sweeper. <laughs> and then I think everybody's favorite was the jetpack. The jetpack was fucking awesome. That thing, uh, <laughs> oh, and the, um, of course, the, uh, oh my god, the, uh, uh Military jet, whatever I'm trying to say the word, I can't think of that was fun too. That yeah. was hard as shit though. Like trying to steal that thing. Um let's see. The physics though, I think for the cars were kinda like familiar to and I'm, some people might disagree. It was like Midnight Club. I remember the driving uh-huh. driving has not always been one of the greatest things for GTA except till recently. I thought four and San Andreas, like I'm driving on fucking ice. Like it, it was so damn sensitive. Um yeah. but uh did you um how did you feel about how did you uh did you take away from San Andreas when you, you played it? And how many times did you play I, it? I like San Andreas a lot. I played it a lot as a kid. Yeah. Just after I beat the game, I would just go back around and just try to find things that I didn't do or explore places I didn't see. Right. Um but what merely made me enjoy uh San Andreas was that it was completely different from the previous titles that they oh, did, yeah. like I mentioned before. Like you got your modern New York City with GTA three then you they're like let's go back to the 80s in vice city right. and then now they're like giving you this kind of like boys in the hood style like urban yeah, story with true. san andreas so there's so much like they, they, they definitely like wanted to do something different and they achieved it yeah and it didn't feel like it was a different like it didn't feel like they just completely did something different they did something different but they kept the foundation of what grand theft auto was 
And what was really cool <laughs> in this game, you could uh, customize the way um, your character, like CJ, looked. Oh and yeah, not yeah, just yeah. With right, clothes. right. So you could do like this is when I, I this is when I remember they actually put in like things that had nothing to do with the game, but it was just like little random things you could do, like taking CJ to the gym to lift weights. <laughs> like you didn't have to do that. Yeah. But then you got all swole. I'm like, you know, I'm not wearing no shirt today. Like, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> or you could be super fat and just eat, you know, fast food all day and just walk around like that. And plus, they made it so you could swim in this game, mm-hmm. which is oh, kind of yeah. funny yep. because I'm like, black people really couldn't swim that well. <laughs> so I was like, thanks for giving us whole grants of thought of that we too can <laughs> We can you got the, the swimming ocean. lessons at the Y. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it, was, yeah. it was cool. You could change his hairstyle. You could change like, I like the know, customization. how his physique looks. They add a lot more customization in addition to like putting in more weapons, more more vehicles, oh, yeah. more things to do. You know, it was it was crazy Besides in how that, it was. Yeah, I was talking about like the time, the more modern game. This came out, the story was set like in 92. That's when Carl, in the game, I mean, uh, it was yeah. 90, 1992. So that's why, you, especially the music. Music was like typical NWA, you know, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. All the Tupac, all that. Um, and then, uh, it's specifically what you're talking about, the new stuff. There's a lot more new things you had, especially the gang wars. Which, there, yeah. I did have a problem, though, with this. The gang wars became pretty much... Uh, you, in the beginning, when you're beginning of the game, you could do the gang wars. And you had to take over them, and then you had to go defend them. But it seemed like once you got to a certain point in the game, they were pointless. And it didn't matter. Yeah. You didn't do them anymore. I remember that. And it was almost kind of like, well, I kind of was annoyed by that. I was like, well, that was dumb. Like, why is it? Especially if I'm on, like, the other tippity-tip corner of the map, and then you got got something blinking yeah. on the bottom in the corner of the map, like, uh, there's no fast travel in GTA ever. So so this yeah. is going to take a minute. I'm going to get on my, my jetpack. Uh, and, <laughs> and go, Let me get my military jet and just fly yeah. over the hood. <laughs> like, no, sir. Back, like, man, there goes CJ. You're stealing damn... There goes CJ again, stealing uh, the damn military planes. <laughs> uh, the gang wars, uh, like I said, to be descriptive, uh, you know, battles uh, with enemy gangs, and then you're prompted whenever the gang, uh, I'm sorry, the player ventures into enemy territory, and then they kill at least three gang members. Um, and then if the player then survives three ways of enemies, then the territory, you, you win it. And then fellow uh, gang members that you're in, uh, Grove Street, would be game one in the streets. Um then it got to the point where, let's see, once all the marked territories are claimed from one uh, of the two hostile gangs, uh, the protagonist gang, then the opposing gang can no longer attack it. Um, then once a player takes control of all the territories, then none can come under attack. So I think that's kind of what it was, too, eventually, but uh, let's see, what other new stuff? Oh, it's a burglary. You can continue this series. You can access tradition <laughs> of controversy, which people I just... I robbed the shit out something of else. you chicken, Rich. You get the home invasion. I don't know if you remember that. It was included as a potential money-making activity. You could stealing uh, burglary vans. Uh, CJ, he was able to sneak into residence at night. Um, it was only, yeah, you only do it at nighttime. Um, and then you cart off valuables or shake down uh, <laughs> the occupants if they were in the house. I remember that. Yeah. Um, we're going to get the hot coffee here in a second because we're trying to keep up with the uh, the controversy. The mini games, <laughs> and numerous ones where you could do, I love this. It was basketball, pool, uh, uh-huh. rhythm-based challenges like dancing and bouncing and lowriders with the hydraulics, uh, video game machines that pay homage to classic arcade games in the game. Uh, and then distant, there was um, the casino games. You could play the casino games. Um, that was the hardest area, I think. Like uh, They didn't say it or they didn't like try to like... Um, show it, but I for me it felt like each new area you got to, the enemies were a tiny bit harder than the than maybe the last ones were. And I know if you try to like do anything in that casino, you're you just get like gunned down. Like you know, you did. Like it's I just it. game over. Um, <laughs> you have methods of gambling, and then you could bet on virtual horse races. Uh, and then the money system. Um, you expanded uh, to where you previous titles. Obviously, you could uh, Vice City. Um, you could spend money on cash, clothes, tattoos, meals. You could uh, yeah. eat like you know that was, that was funny. I love one of the missions you just had smoking in the back seat. Like, hey man, go to the drive-through real quick. Give me a burger, <laughs> and then it turns into like a drive-by, and you got to chase the gang members down. <laughs> I, I was like, I just wanted some food. I didn't want to murder everyone. I love how like how realistic they kind of made it. Um, and then the excessive gambling loss can force the player to sink into debt. I didn't get that, but I know you could do it. Um, and then it showed like your red, red negative numbers if you got that. And then, uh, 
And then when you left the safe house, CJ, you got like an unexpected call from a mysterious person that tells you about your debts. Um, <laughs> and then four, <laughs> I know, right? Four gang members <laughs> suddenly appear and shoot Carl like on sight if he doesn't erase his debt. When when the mysterious person calls in the second time, <laughs> just like in real life, yeah, right? You gonna pay back your mother, loans? No, we gonna send four men to your house. What? Oh my god! <laughs> it was like, uh, excuse me, uh, I have black friends. We don't open mail uh, if they got debts on them. We don't like answer numbers. numbers. We don't know, sir. We don't call this house again. I don't know friends with no eight 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 numbers. Like, <laughs> I don't know eight zero zero. What's this? I don't know you. <laughs> Uh, and then there was actually something that, something that bothered me about like this is something like I guess is relevant to like the media and how right you know how there's controversy with the, with the Rockstar games. This I heard that there was a lot of people upset at how they portray black people in this game. Yeah, and yeah, I as a black that. person, I I got it, mm-hmm. but at the same time I was like, okay, well, when was this game based on? Right. This was taken from you know obviously it was California, obviously it was right. LA. I'm like this was just like a little like uh what's the right word this is just like a little glimpse of what it was really like back in that time i remember like there was like the la riots and you know there was a lot of gang activity around that time in mm-hmm. south south los angeles so i'm like yeah like i wasn't offended by it because i'm like well that was happening you know like this was yeah. something that was the real thing that could be happening you know like so i didn't really like that um, that someone took offense. I mean, I don't want to say I don't like that you took offense. So if you got offended, then right. you got offended. Right. You had to understand what, what, uh, how it was relevant to that culture. Mm-hmm. Like this was a real thing. Like, you know, like what am I going to say? Like, no, it's not real. It hurts my feelings. Like, well, that that's a real thing. Like, and I appreciated that they act because, like, you know, they they you know, Grand Theft Auto and Rockstar, they're really accurate with how they do things purposefully. Right. You know, like. As far as the music that was around that time in that era that this game was set in, you know, and and the problems that was going on um, in the black community, you know, so I didn't really have a problem with how they portray. I did have a problem with stealing a bike the first mission. You could have had me do something else, <laughs> but like if you're portraying a black character who's trying to avoid gang life, which is how the story started, he just came back home for a funeral, and then he got pulled back in. To that gang life and had to, all that everything happened from there. I'm like that's that really happens, you know. Yeah. It's like you know it really it really happens. So I just wanted to put that out there. Like no, you're you know, right. Um, that was just something that really bothered me. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah, you know, I, I totally stuff. understand it. It was uh, what happened. What it was is I have um, article here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, obviously, but it was from um, Michael Marriott. Uh, he wrote. He was. He's a. I'm not sure if he still works for the New York Times. He wrote an article called "The Color of Mayhem." Um, pretty much he was saying San Andreas, he criticized by, you know, perceived racial stereotyping. He said some of the alleged stereotyping uh, was as uh, seen as ironic, um, while others defended the game, noting that the storyline could speak to people of different backgrounds. So that uh-huh. makes sense. I could see from both sides of the fence. And then the um, a study of, uh, let's see, yeah, here it is. Um, the study of how different groups of youth engaged with the game found that they do not passively receive the game, uh, receive the game's images uh, and content. Um, yeah. So I, I can I can see that um, the biggest controversy from this game was most of us know gamers was yeah. hot coffee. Uh, uh, that hot was coffee. a mod. Most people don't remember that. It was a mod and it was a patch. Yeah. But when they passed it in there, you didn't, you could, um, you remember you can go on dates and, and you yeah. could go on the same girl that you can date. Uh, you could eventually, I guess, go in her house. Um, I remember doing it. Uh, and <laughs> I know, yeah, not the literal pun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> refers to the game alludes to the unseen sex scenes. And it was, uh, in the unmodified game, the player, uh, you know, would take the girlfriend front door and ask him if you'd like to come in uh, for some coffee uh quote unquote and then you agree and the camera stays would stay outside swaying back and forth for a bit yep. uh, while moaning sounds you know were heard from the uh, various comments of from carl and his girlfriend well <laughs> and then <laughs> all these sounds were like severely muted um yeah coffee is usually offered once to carl you know all that well the uh let's see it was created by like some 38 year old guy named patrick 
Wildenborg. Yeah, apparently he lives in his mother's basement. Uh, it doesn't say that, but I mean, <laughs> um, and uh, he released it. It's, it's, it's odd though that he, somebody uh, he doesn't work for the company, but they managed to put that in there anyway. I think they found it. Um, I know they took that out because um, 2005 um, production of San Andreas it was suspended, and the game received an uh, ESRB uh, ratings by, for adults only. When that uh-huh. ha- actually came out, and uh, many you know the retailers pulled the game off their shelves in compliance with their own store regulations, it kept from selling you know adult games. And that's another thing. I never ever. I think maybe that one. Oh god, I can't remember the name of the game. Besides that, when I heard about it, I never played an adult only game. I know there's a rating for it, and I've never yeah. seen maybe like uh, Larry or whatever his name is. Oh uh, god damn, I can't think of his name. Uh, it was like a. What game it was? Anyway, I'm doing horrible justice. I'm not remembering the game, but anyway, um, but uh, Rockstar North released like a cold coffee patch for the PC version, and then re-released GTA San Andreas with an M rating. Uh, basically, they took it out, um, and it was re-released for the uh, trilogy pack. So if you play it today on the more released versions, it's not going to be in there. You'd have to get the original versions uh, for it to be in there. I know it came on 360. This is this is another thing. Vice City, I think, was on... I don't think Vice City was a 360 t- title at first. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I don't think because so. Because PS2 I'm, and original Xbox, I don't think they did updates for their their games. You know how, like, today, like, you put turn your yeah. Xbox or PS4 on, you, like, you get an update for a game, like, to fix a bug or a patch or something like that. Um, but, uh, let's see, I think they got sued for it as well. Yeah, they announced a proposed settlement to class action lawsuit... Uh, litigation that had been brought against them by uh, for the hot coffee under proposal sentiments, consumers would be able to swap their adult rated copies for M rated versions, um, and they also quality uh, qualify for like a thirty five dollar cash payment upon signing uh, a sworn statement. Um, that's a report from the New York Times on June twenty fifth, two thousand eight, revealed that a total of two thousand six hundred seventy six claims for the uh, compensation package had been filed. It just seems crazy to me that something small like that, and again, it goes back to it. The game says mature only. It says yeah. Grand Theft Auto on it. Like, if you're that <laughs> upset about it, don't, first of all, don't fucking play the game. How about that? That yeah. makes loads of sense. Like, it just seems ridiculous. I, I just never, I don't understand. Like, you know, people, all these people get upset, and these parents get upset, and the media just, media does it because it's a story, and it gets them the yeah. exposure, and people talk about it. You know, yeah. otherwise, it just, no but. And then it's, I, I just I don't know. it bothers me that like um like they, like you said the people were suing them getting mad over hot coffee and all the and you said it was just a patch it wasn't even in the game but then people don't get mad because at, at things in the game like you can literally beat a man to death with a dildo but no one's yeah. mad about that you think it's same throw but totally same fun. principle you can dress up in a gimp outfit and beat a man to death with a dildo I've done that several times are you sure you're really not thinking fun. of Saints Row though I'm pretty sure that's no, Saints Row. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm you could be. I'm telling you, I remember. Really? Being okay, I think you're right for it. Dildo. I don't remember no, the I think Saints, Saints Row made it a lot more obvious, but it was like <laughs> um, it was after some mission that you, you you I forget what it was. I remember that my weapon was a dildo thing, and I was like, it was big black dildo, and I was like, I guess I'm just beating other dude with a dildo, and it was funny to me. I was like, who? That's a horrible way to I'm die. Going away but without my know? suction cup dildo. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want the black guy to come out beat the shit out you with it. Like, no one got mad at something like that. Right. They got mad at something that some dude created in his basement <laughs> and thought it was funny. Like I think uh, I think people got mad and wanted to sue because they were offended. But it's like you said, like you see the rating on here, you read the, you can read the reviews on the online. Yeah, and you don't have to buy it if you want. If anything, the only thing you would like that would make sense to me is like campaigning towards parents. And right. urging them right. to be more educated on what the game is before they let the kids buy it. Because right. a lot of parents don't care. They're like, oh, just have whatever game you want. No, you, I, that would make more sense to me than just going to Congress. Like, they don't have nothing else better to do but right. pass laws about. Yeah, I know. Like, damn violent, man. Shut your old ass up. You can tell me there's nothing better in the world. It's like when they go after sports and stuff like that. And, like, you're telling me yeah. you're wasting our taxpayer money or you're arguing about, like, you know, I'm not saying steroids and stuff wasn't important, but you can't tell me you there's no more important things in the world or this country you should be taking care of. Like, why do you need to? But a little like, ridiculous. You don't have but, nothing better to do. Like, uh, if anything, like I said, 
urge the parents to be more educated on. Don't waste my time by suing somebody. And I don't even think they were successful in suing them. I don't think some of them were, some of them weren't. Most of them were. I don't think they were honestly at all. They had a settlement. They the only actually you're right. They weren't. The only settlement was what I just mentioned. That you could return the games and you get a cast like thirty five dollars cast back, and you got the M rated version. Like okay, now we're gonna be fucking. But I'm still gonna be able to mow you down with a rocket launcher and run you over. But you know. We can't fuck no yeah. more. <laughs> Quality win there, guys. You yeah. did it. No more fucking. You just them. <laughs> no, that'll hurt Rockstar for good. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. No more fucking, no. But yeah, yeah. you can still kill me, though, with a sniper rifle. <laughs> I think it was even, like fine. <laughs> even, even when you got a process to in the car, like I would roll the camera to the front because I was nasty and I want to see it. And they're literally just sitting there like this, like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, she's still sitting down. She's like, not this doing is not anything. not exciting. Well, why am I like, like this? is nasty. I'm going to go back to watch Laura Croft pixel boobs. I want to see the point things again. I don't know what the hell I'm watching okay. right now. Well. All right, well, this is what I kind of assume might happen, but we got to, let's see, one, two, three, Vice City, San Andreas. So we got to five games. Um, we're going to do is just because we have four and five, and those are pretty huge games in themselves to talk about. So yeah. we're going to end this. This is part one of um, the Grand Theft Auto video game series on so a special edition of J. Lewis's Two Cents. Um, well, we have a lot more to talk to. We're going to talk about Liberty City stories and Vice City stories a little bit, and then we're going to get into the first DLCs uh, for, um, and actually the only DLCs, really, technically. Um, well, the updates for online mode they gave us in 5, uh, but we'll, of course, get to those later. Uh, but Lost in the Damned, uh, and then The Ballad of Gay Tony, and, of course, Grand Theft Auto 5, and then Grand Theft Auto 5 Online as well. Uh, so there's a whole lot more to talk about. Uh, thank you, good buddy, Mighty Me Seeks, man. Thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. doing. Money, weed, and bitches. No, I'm do that. <laughs> That's <laughs> that was cool. before we did before we did the show. I always obviously touch the microphone out. And I asked him to say something, and that's what he said the first time with money, weed, and bitches. All three of those things I do not have. I just want you to know I don't have those things. I just I just want to shout that out in case somebody does have those things, and they're like, yeah! Like that's, that's what I want to do. But thanks for having me on here, man. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. It's always a good, t- good time with you, man. You're a funny guy and entertaining as always. Uh, so we're going to do... Um, Part two is going to come out soon, and then uh, part one here. But I want to thank everybody who listens to Generation Gaming and J. Lewis Two Cents, as always. I am J. Lewis. This is Generation Gaming, the video game news outlet made for the gamers by the gamers.